Hello. Hello. My name is Mark. My name is Mark. And, and we, we are students of Ghana Christian International High School. And we urge you all to subscribe to His Girl TV. Link in bio. Hello there. You are welcome to His Girl TV. And um, before I begin with what we are supposed to do today, I would like to remind you to subscribe to the channel in case you have not um, done so. And then if you have also subscribed, um, thank you very much for the support. Now, um, I have had um, um, comments uh, about some people not being able to see the text um, clearly um, in the sense that some of them complain that the text um, are blur on their screen. Now, I would like you to know that every um, video uploaded on this platform is not less than 720p, which is a standard HD video. So if you are experiencing uh, a blur for the blurring of your of your text, it means that you have to change the resolution in your YouTube um, um, settings. So you can just click on the on the settings in the YouTube uh, resolution and then take the higher uh, video resolution. If not, you'll be watching it in less than 720p because uh, I put in effort or the team uh, puts in effort to ensure that every video here is not less than a 720p. The least you can get is 720p. We even have some which has a 1080p and so you should be able to see it clearly. If you are finding issue uh, with that, basically that is the reason. Change the video experience, uh, the video setting in the YouTube channel, just uh, on the on the on the screen of, of your phone. You, you will see some um, settings there. Just click on it and change the video setting, and you will be cool with that. Good. So um, today I want us to look at. A very important topic and um, once again we are looking at um, Christianity in West Africa and uh, basically we are going to um, concern ourselves with uh, contributions of Christianity to West Africa um, contribution of Christianity to West Africa and that's and that's what going to be our our topic for today and so basically that is that. I, I want to teach uh, this topic because there are so many arguments um, surrounding um, the impact of Christianity on the African continent or on West Africa. And so bear with me and let's begin with our lesson for today. But so our objectives for today, so for today's lesson is simple as um, contributions of Christian uh, of Christianity to West Africa, so you should be able to discuss the contributions of Christianity to West Africa, all right, to West Africa, and that's what we'll be looking at. So let's take a look at our introduction. Now, we are all aware that um, the people in West Africa, or in Africa in general, were a traditionalist, um, in the sense that they 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 had an indigenous idea about god that they worship god in the traditional way uh, and so they worshiped many gods and all of that uh, and so somewhere um, in the 15th century the portuguese being the first um, european country to to have come to um, west africa was the first country to introduce um, the christian faith to the west africans West Africans because other African continent, for instance, um, in Eastern Africa, where we have Ethiopia and Co, they Ethiopia had had been Christianized way before 1333 or so, and so some part of Africa had been Christianized even before the sorry even even before the Portuguese came to um, West Africa. West Africa had not. Uh, I mean, Christianity had not yet um, um, stepped foot here, and so it was the Portuguese who first introduced um, Christianity to West Africa. 
okay because they were the first um, european country to have come to west africa don't also forget that in the in the in the, in the previous uh, video um, concerning the coming of the europeans that we we learned we also said that one of the reasons for the coming of the europeans was to um, introduce um, christianity to the africans okay so have that in mind now which form of christianity was introduced to the west africans by the portuguese um, that form of christianity was that of catholicism all right so the roman catholic church uh, way of um, worshiping was what was introduced to west africans by uh, by the portuguese i mean explorers or missionaries uh, bear in mind that i mean the christian faith has many different dominations uh, denominations um in there and they all have different um, um um doctrines and so the portuguese church introduced the catholic faith to west africans now earlier attempts um to introduce um christianity was not successful and the reason being that some um i mean the portuguese were not successful in, in the sense that sometimes they were they lacked on um, personnel or missionaries to do their job and and Mary, and then and many of into some of them died um because of of the climatic condition in west africa many of them died of malaria so we will look at the problems that the missionaries encountered um in our subsequent videos but basically these were some of the reasons also um, um um language barrier also became a problem for the portuguese because they did not speak the indigenous um, language of the people okay and most importantly um the issue of slavery also impacted um, um hugely on uh the efforts of these uh, missionaries or christian um, um nations uh to christianize the west africans okay now after the portuguese came somewhere in the 15th um, century to introduce um, christianity uh other uh other missions also came from other european countries so some uh missions like the christian missionary society which is now the smc came in sierra leone um, the anglican uh, missions also came in then the basel missionaries the presbyterians also came in then the wesleyan uh, Methodist uh, missions also came in there and all these and other uh, missionaries you know joined the crusade to um to um to christianize the west africans or to introduce um christianity into into west africa all right so there is also a question that so you, you would you may want to ask a question as to why were the europeans interested in christianizing africa don't forget that there is something in the bible called the great commission go ye the world and spread the gospel so that could be a motive behind the europeans coming in um, to christianize africans and also yeah it, it is part of the of the christian um, doctrine to spread um, the word to other um, people and also there was this perception that africans were were backward people were uncivilized people okay and so they needed to be to be civilized through um, christianization so all these were some of the the beliefs that went into the europeans um, um taking upon themselves to come down to africa and more so even the europeans saw it as a burden uh, on the white man to civilize and, and 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 also christianize the african people all right so this image you find here is that is an image i came across um in an archives and this is uh, somewhere in the 18th century um image you have seen this is a white man over here and these are the local chiefs in a west african country known as ghana um hearing the word of god or the sermon uh, has been introduced to them by a missionary so this is how most of the christian missions introduce god or introduce christianity to the african people and these are the mad houses that you find them um, um, um living in so this is a picture for you to know how the whole um christianization um um process uh i went okay good so let's move on to um, um something but very important the subject matter 
the main ones that we are here for. Now, the impact uh, of Christianity on West African society has been has uh, has persisted uh, up to this day. So the 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 many argument that people make is that uh, how impactful was this um, Christian faith or the Christianization of Africans? Some people believe it was good. At, Others also believe that um, it had impacted um, negatively on the life of the African. So, I mean, basically, that is what we are here for. And I'm not here to take a stand, but I'm here to uh, provide you with the fact. Then you can continue with the argument based on the fact. And then you make your own um, decisions, informed um, decisions. And some of these effects have still persisted among Africans today. And Africans still feel the effect of some of these uh, activities of the Christian people. Now, while it has brought undoubted uh, benefit, undoubted um, benefit, it has also harmed the traditional way of life. And so there is a two way to acquire you know it has both a negative and positive side so in the points that i'm going to give you they are both a negative and positive you know i've mixed all of them and so you can you can in your own way you can in your own way just try and and, and take away both the objectives uh, the, the positive and the negative um, side of of that Good. So let's begin with um, the first point, the first um, impact or the first contribution of Christianity to West Africa. So the first one was that um, the Christian missionaries brought about the belief in one God. Okay, it led to the belief in one God. Believe in one God because we have already indicated that Africans were traditionalists. They believe in the idea of God. Um, and very often, um, Europeans or some European missionaries are quick to say that Africans didn't know God um, it was the European who came to introduce Africa to God uh, in my Lord week or so said um, something like that but then you shouldn't forget that the idea of God was never taught to the African by uh, a European uh, missionaries uh, Africans knew that there was God uh, I mean gods, not even God gods, including both the lesser gods and the supreme gods and all these african countries that i mean african people african ethnic groups that we have them they all had names for for these gods so the yoruba had a name the akans the asante had a name you know the igbo you know the of course the world of people so all these people had names for 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 god and so don't explain or discuss this point in a way to seem that africans did not know God and that it was the Europeans who came to introduce Africa, uh, I mean, God to Africans. When you do that, you are going to be marked down. Now, the only difference is that the Europeans came to introduce the idea or they believe in one God. Okay, they, the Christian doctrine, I mean, centered on the worship of one supreme God as opposed to that of the of the of the traditional um, doctrine or belief uh, in many forms of what deity or god you get the point so that was the only difference here the christian faith brought only one god but then i mean uh, traditionally we the africans believed in the existence of many gods including a supreme one okay and so in this respect, we are saying that the Christian religion uh, therefore differed from the traditional religion of West Africa, uh, with along with it an acceptance of one supreme God uh, being worshipped, uh, a hierarchy of God. So that was the only difference between the, the Christian faith, the new Christian faith, and the already existing belief among the West Africans. West Africans, most of the I mean, their religious or worldview was that of they believe in many gods, okay, unlike what the Christian faith. So, the, the, the only thing that the Christians came to do was to introduce the belief in one supreme God that you don't worship any other God apart from that supreme God, okay. And this has comes with it a whole lot of debate that uh, scholars are still 
still there isn't any answer to it that was the africans they didn't know the supreme god who is the supreme god was it the same god that the africans um considered as uh, a bigger god or uh, more powerful than the lesser gods that is i mean uh um, 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 um an argument for another day so let's move on to the next one now this is where i normally will praise the christian missionaries for um, they also try to help in the terminating of certain obnoxious um, practices okay um, certain obnoxious and wicked i mean uh, practices associated with the with the with the traditional religion or the traditional form of um, worship was actually abolished or terminated by these uh, missionaries they forced um, certain chiefs to to do away with some of these um, practices an example of such um, practices was the human sacrifices as well as the killing of twins whose birth were regarded as a bad woman so human sacrifice had been part of um, 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 the african belief okay using humans to sacrifice was part of the african belief and this we all know is contrary to what the the christian faith believed in and so the missionaries mounted a lot of pressure uh, even together with some of the 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 british colonial masters they signed treaties in order to abolish the human sacrifice which was done and so today nobody is sacrificed in africa anymore also the killing of twins you know africans twins come occasionally you don't you don't see a lot of people giving birth to twins and so to the african when you come as twice if you give birth to two people it was seen to be uh, a bad omen from the gods all right that was the reason why they were killing twins they didn't know the scientific explanation um behind um uh, I'm, I'm giving birth to two people they only felt that naturally humans give birth to one so if you give birth to two it was considered as a bad omen but that was not so and so they were killing these twins that came up as a result of that but then the the christian uh, missions uh, missionaries stood firm and they 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 made them to abolish all these obnoxious or wicked um, practices and so today i mean uh, africa is no more into human sacrifice or into the killing of twins all right let's move on to the next one now another important way another important aspect was that christian uh, christian missionaries also uh, introduced the african to some vocational skills all right uh, this is not to say that africans or west africans had no um, vocational skills yes they were into um, certain um, vocational skills like uh, wood carving uh, blacksmith you know uh, brass making and 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 all all of that and so yeah but then the the only difference that the europeans or the missionaries uh, brought was uh, a modern form of craft you know a modern form of doing things all right a more um um, um refined way and so for instance a modern form of craft of course such as um, carpentry and then masonry were all introduced by the europeans they they they, they also set up um, um craft um centers uh, as part of their educational um, program where people go to learn these and all these things were not in africa um before the coming of the europeans so if your father was a carpenter you just you just follow him and learn the trade that is what the african knew but there wasn't any any center um set up by the african for uh people who had wanted to learn um on this craft to, uh, um to go okay again in agriculture they also set up uh, model farms where they use scientific agriculture you know um, scientific methods to to farm were also taught and then new crops were also introduced to the people okay and this went alongside with long-standing indigenous um, crop productions that were already going on as so, for example i mean if you look at ghana for instance for example the methodist experimental farm uh, they, they they set up an experimental farm near um cape coast and then whose crops included um cotton coffin black pepper uh, mango um, ginger uh, um, cinnamon and then olive tree so all these um trees were somehow all these um crops were introduced to the african to enrich the the life of the african so yes they they did quite a, 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 a remarkable work in the field of um, um vocational you know aspect all right good 
So let's move on to the next one. This is also another important um, contribution that the uh, the Christian missionaries also um, um, contributed to the development of um, West Africa. That is the the reduction of the various ethnic groups into writing. So they also worked on our um, vernacular. That's the vernacular um, literature. All right. Now these things came as a result of the fact that the Europeans could not understand the local um, languages. More so, they felt or the local people felt that it was an alien to read the Bible in someone else's um, language. And so in order to encourage the local people to embrace the Bible as their own, to make it as their own, there was a deliberate effort by these uh, missionaries to reduce the the languages of these people, ethnic um, people, into um, writing. And so if you look at in Ghana, for instance, the Presbyterians were the pioneers in reducing the Ga and the Tri into writing. These Ga and Tri are languages speaking by some um, sections, some ethnic groups in, in Ghana. Now, in 1858, the Reverend, uh, Reverend uh, Jonas um, Zimmerman wrote a, a grammar of the Ga language and the Ga they are located along the coast of modern Ghana today. Now, in 1874, a Reverend J. G. Um, Christola also produced the three um, grammar and um, dictionary, and the three people are the Akan-speaking um, people in modern Ghana who are located in the forest um, regions today. Again, the Evangelical uh, Presbyterian missionaries were also the first to develop uh, literature in Ewe, and all these people are found in Ghana. And the Catholics were responsible for the Inzima um, um, literature another in Zuma, another group of people in West Africa. So had it not been the Europeans or the missionaries, I'm sure that most African languages couldn't have been written down. All right. Let's take a look at more of the countries. Now, if you go to Nigeria, the SMC, the Christian Missionary Societies, also developed um, literature in Yoruba. All right. And the native bishop, uh, Ajayi uh, Krauda, who was the first, uh, I think, Protestant uh, black man to be ordained as a priest, also produced the first translation in the Bible in Yoruba, all right? Yes, and then in 1859, the first newspaper in Yoruba also came, called the Iwi Rohim, all right? was also published. Then other uh, missionaries also worked in um, Nigerian, of course, languages like Ifik, uh, we have uh, uh, Kanari, and then the Igbo, Igbo, all these uh, of course, languages were worked on by other European um, missionaries. Again, if you go to Gambia, the missionary uh, also the first uh, um, principal of what of course later became known as the Gambia High School. Uh, that was uh, Reverend James um, Feldhouse also produced a wall of uh, a grammar in 1876. Um, um, and so you can see that this was a remarkable work that today all these, almost all the African um indigenous um languages are uh, have been um written down okay and that explains why sometimes the spelling of some of our indigenous words are not the same as as the writing okay so you, you can have some in your own um, languages that some words are spelled um differently as compared to how it is being um pronounced in the local dialect it was just because it was the europeans who who did that? Who, 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 who? Of course, who uh, wrote that? Good. So, let's then move on to. I think the the next one. Now, education. Yes, on the field of education was also one of the remarkable achievements or contributions that um, the Christian missionaries, you know, um, gave to West Africa. Education. They did quite very very well in the field of what education and perhaps this was uh, uh, um, probably the greatest um, service that these uh, missionaries um, gave to West Africans. Now again, West don't, don't also write in the sense that West Africans were not educated or didn't have education. Yes, West Africans had education but their form of education was that of 
informal education where you learn whatever you are learning from either a relative or your parents you understand provided your parents had the knowledge the difference is that the these um, europeans came to introduce to west africans a western education western type of what education where they build i mean houses or buildings people go there to go and learn all right yes and so because of that they establish uh, this introduction of education led to the establishment of um, schools in most of West Africa. And so today, if you go to all the West African countries, the best schools, especially either being a Tescan Cycle School or uh, a university or a teacher training colleges, were all built by Europeans. A classical example, um, for instance, in Sierra Leone, the Fora Bay College was established by, by the SMC. All right, in 1814. Um, okay, and also if you go to Ghana, the first um, secondary school uh, uh, um, to be established in Ghana was known as the Infant Stepping um, Secondary School um, in Ghana, in Cape Coast, uh, to be precise. It was established in 1876 by the uh, Methodist or the Wesleyan Methodist School. Then also, if you go to Nigeria, the Methodist Missionary also started a school in Badagri. All right in uh, in 1842 and this is the image of the infant stepping um, school one of the best schools in ghana our second cycle school in ghana is a secondary school and these are the original buildings even though they have added modern ones but these were the original buildings built by the european and there are several of these schools um, that we can mention all of them here but there are several of them you know spread across um, the West African um, 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 countries. Again, even though we have already established that um, some at some point in history, these um, Europeans or missionaries, some of them supported slavery with 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 Bible um, verses and all of that. And I read a book um, written by Ashimolo, a pastor Ashimolo. Why? I mean, um, um, what's wrong in being black? And that's the title of the book. Where Ashimolo actually quotes bible text to to prove why africans were enslaved and 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 to endorse that africans were cursed by god and so the harmatic theory which was of course propounded in those days by the europeans that harm was cursed and since harm was a black man then we 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 were the descendants of uh, i mean of harm so since harm was cursed to be a slave to his brothers that is why we, we were being enslaved. So they used all these um, verses. I mean, Paul uh, admonishing um, slaves to obey their master, even if they are wicked or they are good to them. All these Bible verses were being used by the missionaries to, 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 to allow slavery to go on and to make the African feel less inferior and inferior about um, um, himself. But then um, later, some Christian uh, missionaries like John Wesley um, came in there with 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 campaigns to um to suppress the 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 trade in human beings and so they actually campaigned and and finally it led to the suppression and later the abolition of the slave trade. So yes, initially they accepted it and so but then um later some people um came in there to help to abolish um slavery. Good. Let's take a look at the last one. The, the last one was in the in the field of health. Yes, they also established some um, a medical um, centers. So the missionaries established medical centers, um, uh, you know, to 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 attend to the sick, and then in due course, uh, leprosarium and then orphanages were also built to supplement these services, whereby people who were of course suffering from leprosy and all of that were sent and medical wise was also one of the the areas that these uh, missionaries worked very 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 well because you couldn't preach i mean um, the gospel to africans or west africans while they're getting sick and all of that so they needed to help them so a classical example for instance in nigeria whereby um father jane maria um conquered uh, a roman catholic uh, of commissions operated in and from Abukota, Abu, Abu all right, for 40 years, all right. He, he had been there for 40 years doing the work. And also in 1829, um, 
the SMC church also open uh, Aye Enu Hospital in Onisha, right, which is today a leading uh, hospital in the Anambra state in Nigeria. And then in 1902, to the Methodists also opened a clinic in Igbo Ora. And so all these were some of the the, the works um, done by um, done by the Christian uh, missionaries in Nigeria. Now in Ghana also, um, for instance, uh, the Roman Catholic Church or sisters, we call them Roman Catholic sisters, also provided uh, medical um, care to people who were living in the northern and upper um, regions of the country. Uh, yeah, and then also in the Gambia, also the Roman Catholic sisters again established a clinic for the sick, um, for also and also for children in Banju. Okay, in eighteen. Um, 23. So yes, they also did immensely, they also did quite well in the field of um, um, health. Now, I think this will bring us to the end of our our discussion um, for today. But then, let me stress that before all these, some of these um, um, contributions that we have talked about were unintended. And Professor Edubwahe of Ghana will tell you that some of the achievements of colonialism or some of the benefits, some of the seemingly um, benefit of colonialism in West Africa where some of them were unintended. And so, I mean, for instance, yes, they established educate schools uh, to train, but then uh, what you should not forget is that these schools were not training people to become doctors or to become um, politicians or lawyers, but rather they were just learning how to read the Bible and come out and then also um, um, teach to help in the, uh, to help in the evangelization um, process. And that was basically um, the reasons for the establishment of these schools. So they were not, or the schools were not established so as to, to help the people. And so it's just after independence that some of these um, things came to be useful um, to the African. And so, but then to Edubuhan, some of these things were unintended. And so I don't know what you may think or you say about that. But then, hey, that's all that I have for today. Um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and also share and recommend you. If you have any topic that you may want us to look at, uh, you can comment or write it in the comment section so that we will do that for you. Uh, yes. So um, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate all the love that you are sharing to us. It's really encouraging us to do more. So um, um, subscribe and yeah.